Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I have something really fun to share with you. I'm going to be creating some super, super cute covers for my retractable measuring tapes. I have here three, so I'm going to be sharing three different patterns for you guys. So if you have some boring measuring tapes like I do here, bring them all and let's crochet some super cute covers for these bad boys. Let's fancy them up because they cannot stay like this when you crochet, right? <laughs> so I really hope you guys enjoy today's video. If you do, don't forget to subscribe and to leave your massive thumbs up as you always do. So I hope you enjoy and now let's begin with the project. So first here we have all of the materials we are going to be using for today's project, starting with the beautiful colorful yarns that we have here. We have the Iggy yarn on this side and the Bravissimo yarn on this other side here. So for the very first cover I'm going to be using brown, beige and pink and then for the next one I'm going to be using white, yellow and green and then for the last one I'm going to be using white, red and green. And then you will also need the retractable measuring tapes. I'm going to be linking some in the description so you can check it out. They are super super cheap and you can actually make them super cute as I'm going to show in today's video. And then for the tools, I'm going to be using a tapestry needle so that we can do some sewings and the weave-ins, a 3.5 millimeters hook in which I'm going to be using for all of the yarns. I'm not going to change my hook. And last but not least, I'm going to be using a small pair of scissors. All right, so these are all the materials. So now let's begin with our little covers. I'm going to be starting with the blue. So I'm first going to be showing you how to do the base for our cover in which is this one. So it's very simple with some double crochets and half double crochets and half of the cover is six centimeters in total and it's going to be the same for both the front and the back of the covers. So I'm going to be showing you a super fun and easy way to start your circle. So we are not doing a magic ring or chaining and slip stitching at the beginning. It's going to be a little bit different for this one because I want the middle to be nice and tight. So we are going to be starting with a slip knot. And then we are going to be chaining four. One, two, three, four. And we are going to be using this very first chain to crochet the very first round. So we are going to be working with double crochets, US terms, and then going into that very first chain, make sure that you grab two loops of this chain, just like that. And then into this very first stitch, we are going to be making the very first double crochet and all of the others for the very first round. So, Go into the first chain, double crochet, and then we are going to go all the way around creating double crochets into that very first chain until you have 12 stitches in total. So we are going to be having 11 double crochets and then we are going to be counting the chain three that is left here as the very first stitch. So 12 in total. So now you're gonna go into the chain three. So we have the first stitch of the double crochet, the first double crochet, so it's not this one. It's actually the one of the chain three. Right at the top, insert your hook into that chain. Then you're going to pull up a loop, make it nice and tight, and then slip stitch. So here we have the very first round completed. So now for the second round, we are only going to be chaining one and then we are going to be creating our very first double crochet right after the chain one so we are not counting the chain one as a stitch into the same stitch where we've done the slip stitch right here into this stitch here it's a little bit hard as it's not tall enough but the finishing looks really nice like this and then the first double crochet is gonna go into that stitch, the very first one. And then the second one is gonna go into the same stitch from the first one. 
There we go. So we have two double crochets here at the beginning. So now the second stitch, it's this one. It's a little bit weird looking, but it's this one. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve stitches in total. So we want to cover all the twelve stitches. So going to the second stitch, it is a little bit hidden, but it it is there. See? And then two double crochets into that same stitch. And that's what we are going to be doing. We are going to be creating increases into every stitch all the way around. So two double crochets into every stitch all the way around. And you should have 24 double crochets into the second round. So I'm here at the end. I'm going to be creating my last two double crochets into that stitch. We are gonna go into the double crochet stitch right at the beginning. So we are going to be skipping the chain one into the double crochet stitch. We are going to pull up a loop and we are going to slip stitch. So now we have round number two completed. So now for round number three, we are going to be starting with a chain of one and we are going to be doing half double crochets. So into this same stitch, where we did the slip stitch, we are going to be doing the first half double crochet and then the second half double crochet into the same stitch. So we have an increase right at the beginning. So now for the next stitch, we are going to be doing one half double crochet and then for the following one, we are going to be doing two half double crochets. So it's going to be increase one increase one increase one all the way around and for this last round we are going to be skipping the very last stitch so we are not going to be completing this round all the way around because we want to have the little space for the measuring tape to unravel so as you can see i have two stitches left so into the second to last this one which is number 23, we are going to be finishing with an increase following the pattern. So the previous one was only one half double crochet. So the following one is two half double crochets into the same stitch. So from here, we can fasten off. So I'm going to chain one and then you wanna leave enough yarn to do the sewing of both sides. So you want to have three times the sizing of the circle to make sure that the yarn is going to be enough to go all the way around. So you're gonna go around the circle like this with your yarn all the way around and then you're going to be doing that three times in total. So we have one, two and three times going around. So this is enough yarn to go all the way around and do the sewing. So cut off the yarn and we can now fasten off. There we go. I'm going to weave the one here in the middle because then we don't have to do this at the end. There we go. Weaving completed. Now I can just cut off the yarn. So once you've done one, you're gonna go ahead and make another one, but this one you are not going to be leaving the long tail because we have already on this one on the first one. So for the second, so at the back here you can weave in both the ends you're going to be having for the second one. So now I have both the sides completed, which is the back and the front. Now I'm going to be showing you the little detail that we are going to be having for this beautiful, this super cute cover in which is going to be a flower, this flower here. So I'm going to now show you how we crochet this little flower. For the flower, I'm using beige and pink, starting with the beige in which is the middle of the flower. So with the beige, we are going to be starting with the slip knot and we are going to be chaining three. So into the very last chain, the third one from the hook, we are going to be creating a half double crochet and into the same chain, we are going to be making 11 half double crochets and for this one, the chain two at the beginning will count as a stitch. So we are going to be also having 12 stitches in total for this very first round. 
So the last one, half double crochet number 12. So now we are gonna go into the chain at the beginning. We have the half double crochet stitch. So it's not this one, it's the one of the chain. And then into that stitch, you're going to pull up a loop, make it nice and tight and slip stitch. Now we can fasten off. So chain one, cut off yarn and fasten off. And now we can bring the pink, which I think is more like a salmon color, right? It's not really pink. So this next shade here. <laughs> so I'm going to be starting with a slip knot with this yarn. And you want to turn this round here on the reverse. So the wrong side. I think it looks nicer when we do the petals here at the here on the reverse because then on the right side it looks really really neat. I think so. So you can check that for yourself and see which one you want to do. I like to do it here on the reverse. We are going to be working in between the half double crochets. We are not going to go into the stitch like this, all right? We are gonna go all the way around the stitch in between the half double crochet. So that's also something that you can check what you prefer. So go ahead and search your hook into any space in between the half double crochets. You're going to pull up a loop and you're going to be attaching with a slip stitch. That's how you begin. And then we are going to be chaining 10, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then you're going to be folding the chain. And then you're gonna go into the next stitch available, which is in between the half double crochets right there, right here. Then you're going to pull up a loop and then you go into a slip stitch, that in place. So here we have the first petal. So from here, you're going to be chaining 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Fold it. I need more yarn. <laughs> Fold it. And then you're gonna go into the next space in between the, the half double crochets right here. It's the next one. Pull up a loop and slip stitch. And that's all you're going to be doing for the petals. It's that easy. So go ahead following the same steps, creating the petals until you have 11 petals in total. So here I'm going to be making my last petal, which is petal number 11. So go in between the half double crochets and slip stitch and that's it. So now we have all the 11 petals completed. Now we want to slip stitch here to the other side. Make sure that you don't do at the front because here is the front of our project, of our flower. So you just find a stitch here at the back, insert your hook into that stitch and then you want to slip stitch here at the back like this and that's it. All right, so now you want to chain one. So now before you cut the yarn, you just wanna make sure that you leave a little bit of yarn. You don't need a lot, but make sure that you leave enough. It's just so we can sew um, the middle of the flower to our base. So leave a little bit of yarn, cut it, and now we can fasten off. So now you're gonna go ahead and weave all of the other ends leaving the one that we are going to be doing the sewing. I'm going to thread the yarn of the flower into my tapestry needle. Place exactly where you want the flower on top of the cover and you're going to be holding it right here. And then you're going to be just moving the petals to the middle. Find where the yarn is first, is right here. So you're going to be finding one little stitch of the cover and then you're gonna go through that stitch and then now you can move into the next stitch of the petal. So we have this first petal, 
so you're gonna go into the next one so that was the first this is the second go, go through the second and then go through a stitch of the cover I'm using the very first round to sew the flower in place so go into the next slip stitch and then into a next stitch of the cover so yeah just keep on repeating the same steps grabbing one stitch of the petal one of the cover and sewing the two together When you get at the end, you're going to be having one last stitch, so go through that stitch of the petal, the last one, and you can go all the way through to the back of this part, because then we can just weave here at the back, and you can do it here because it's going to be on the inside and no one is going to see this yarn here at the back anyways. So first I'm going to just fasten off, so choose a stitch. And then don't go all the way through, leave a little loop here at the end, go through the loop with your needle and then just pull nice and tight. This is going to fasten off and now we can just weave this yarn in here at the back. So now cut off the yarn. So now to sew the two parts together, you're gonna get the one that is gonna go at the bottom. I'm going to be doing here the one with the yarn so that we can do the sewing. And you wanna make sure that it's on the reverse the wrong side it's facing you and you're going to be placing the tape measure right on top make sure that the little space that we left here it's exactly where the tape measure is right here and then you're going to be placing the other side right on top making sure that the opening is here as well and now we can sew the two sides together i'm going to be threading this yarn into my tapestry needle so we are going to be starting into the very first stitch you can find right after the little gap because then it's going to match exactly to the other side. So find the very first half double crochet and sew the two together. So going to that very first stitch and the very first one again from the other side just so that we can lock this yarn in place and it's not going to be opening like this. And now you can match every stitch on both sides. So one from this side, one from the other, and sew it together. The next from one side, and then the next, same next of the other side, and sew it together. It's that easy. So next one of both sides, sew it together. And now you can just repeat the same all the way around. So now we are getting here towards the end. Make sure that you match all the stitches. I have here the last one now. So go into the last one from one side and the last one of the other side and sew the two last ones together. We can just go back into that same stitch just one more time and then you can fasten off here. So go through the loop at the end, pull nice and tight and now we can weave this yarn in. I'm going to just move this yarn to the back of the cover through a couple of stitches and then I'm going to do the weave in here at the back. You want to try your best to just hide it nicely so that you don't see a lot of the yarn here. So weave in, now completed, cut off the yarn. 
now we have the very first cover completed. So the second one looks like this. I have half of it completed, so I'm going to be sharing with you the other half. And it's super simple. This is going to be the back and the front, and it looks amazing. So with the yellow, go ahead and make a slip knot. And then you're going to be chaining four. So one, two, three, four. You're going to be then joining into the very first chain with a slip stitch and now we have a little circle right in the middle and this one i am going to be making with the chain at the beginning because i want to have a little gap but it's going to be up to you if you want to start like this or like i showed you for this one here all right i like this one with a little gap in the middle so we are going to be doing some half double crochets here for the middle of the flower. So we start with a chain of two and then go into the middle of the circle, the middle of the chain. You will find that little circle right there and then half double crochet. And now go around the circle creating half double crochets until you have 12 stitches in total so i'm going to be having 11 half double crochets and then 12 with the chain two right at the beginning so once you have the 12 stitches we can go ahead and slip stitch into the chain at the beginning and now we can fasten off so chain one cut off yarn and fasten off so with the white you go ahead and create a slip knot and now working on the right side of this of the very first round of the circle we are going to be attaching the yarn in between any space of the half double crochet so we are not going to be working on top of the stitches into the stitches we are going to be working in between the half double crochets so choose any space I'm going to go here in between these two half double crochets I'm going to pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through. So that's how I attach my new yarn in place with a single crochet. And then for this very first one, I'm going to be chaining one. We are going to be doing some clusters with three double crochets. So the first one is a little bit different because it's the beginning. So you're going to be wrapping the yarn around the hook inserting your hook into that same stitch and pulling up a loop into the same one and then you're going to yarn over and pull through two keeping the last one on the hook and then wrapping the yarn around the hook inserting into that same stitch pulling up a loop yarning over and pulling through two keeping the last one on the hook and then you're going to yarn over and pull through all loops together. So that's a three double crochets cluster. And then chain one. And now we can do the next one. So find the next stitch, the next space available, which is right here. And then you're going to be wrapping the yarn around the hook. You're going to insert your hook into that space, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, keeping the last one on the hook, wrapping the yarn around the hook, go through the same space, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, keeping the last one on the hook, and then you're going to be doing that one more time. So we have three double crochets in total, and then you're going to yarn over and pull through all the loops together, just like that. And then chain one, and do the same into the next stitch, and all the others around. So find the next stitch and then create a cluster with three double crochets. A three double crochets cluster. And then chain one and follow the same all the way around into every stitch. You're going to be having 12 clusters in total. So 12 petals in total for the second round. So I got here at the end, I'm going to be making my last petal. So chain one and 
cluster right at the end into the last space. To finish it off, you go into chain one and then you're gonna go right on top of this very first cluster. So we have the chain, the single crochet in the chain one here. So skip that and go into the very first V you can find, pull up a loop, make it nice and tight and slip stitch. And then now we can fasten off. So cut yarn and fasten off. And we can bring the last shade in which is green. This beautiful mint green. I love this shade so, so much. So with the green, make a slip knot. So choose any space I'm going to be doing here. So insert your hook into that space and attach with a single crochet exactly the same as I did with the white. And then I'm going to chain one because now we are going to be doing half double crochets all around the petals. So into every chain one space, we are going to be doing three half double crochets. So for this one, I'm only going to be doing two because we have the chain at the beginning. So we are going to be just doing two into this same chain one space. And then you're gonna go into the next chain one space and create three half double crochets into the same chain one space. Go into the next chain one space and three half double crochets into the same chain one space. So once I get into the last space, I will be back and then I'll share with you what I'm going to be doing. So as you can see, I have the last space here. So we are not doing the three half double crochets. Instead of the three half double crochets, we are going to be doing three single crochets, as you can see, because then we are going to be having the space for the tape to go in and out. So from here, go straight into the chain one space, the last one, and you're just going to be doing three single crochets into that last chain one space, and that's it. So now you can find the chain at the beginning and then slip stitch. And now from here, we are not going to fasten off because we are going to be using this yarn to attach our cover into the measuring tapes. So before we attach the two together, we want to do the weave-ins first because we are not going to be able to do this at the end because it's going to be already on the inside of the cover. So once you have the second one completed, you have it ready on the right side, the hook is right here, so we can start joining. Bring the first one you've created, make sure that it's on the reverse. So here is the reverse of mine. Here is on the right side, as you can see. So turn on the reverse, find the three single crochets and you're going to be placing at the back of the first one. Make sure that the single crochets are together. So here we have the single crochets and here the single crochets, place it right on top. So now we can start joining. The yarn is going to be at the back of the project like this. So you're going to be finding the first stitch right after the three single crochets. So it's right here. So into this stitch, you're going to pull up a loop and then you're going to yarn over and pull through. We are going to be joining with some single crochets this second cover. So find the next stitch from the one at the front and then the next stitch of the one at the back and then you're going to pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through, joining the two together with the single crochet, going to the next one which is here of the front and then the next one of the back and then single crochet. So once I have a little bit more single crochets completed, I will be back to show you how you're going to be placing the measuring tape inside the cover. So now I have here half of the cover with single crochets. So now I can place my measuring tape inside 
just like this. We are going to be having this detail around. It's going to be kind of 3D in which I love. So now you can go ahead and follow the same steps, grabbing one stitch from one side, one from the other, and joining with the single crochet. But this time you're just going to be having the measuring tape on the inside. So it is going to be a little bit easier. So now I have here just two stitches left. So just carry on doing single crochets until you finished with the stitches. There we go. Now this one is ready. So once you've done the single crochets and joining the two sides together all the way around, we are now done with the second cover. This is how it looks like. I love this one so, so much. So now we can chain one Cut the yarn, fasten off, and weave this yarn in exactly the same as we did with the first one. So now for the last one, you're gonna go ahead and do the cover that we did for the very first one with double crochet, double crochet, and half double crochets around the three rounds that we did for the first one. When you have both sides completed, remember to leave enough yarn to do the sewing at the end. You're going to be leaving this aside for now because we are going to be making a little strawberry to attach to the front of this cover. It's going to be incredibly beautiful. I cannot wait to share with you this one. So I'm going to be using red and green. Yes. And first we are going to be starting with the red to create the strawberry. So we are going to be starting with a magic ring. So how you make a magic ring, you're going to be getting the end of the yarn hold with your pinky. And then you're going to be wrapping around your two fingers, the index in the middle, crossing the yarn on top of the previous one and leaving it at the back of the first one. Insert your hook into the first one and grab the second and that's how you make a magic ring. Now you can release and you have the magic ring completed. And we are going to be starting with a chain of two. So we are going to be doing some puff stitches with four loops in total going around like this. So you're going to be wrapping the yarn around the hook. You're going to be going around the magic ring and you're going to pull up a loop and then you're going to be doing that three times for this first one. So wrap it around, go into the ring and pull up a loop. And one more time for this very first one. And then you go into yarn over and pull through all the loops like this. And then you go into chain one. So now the next two puff stitches we are going to be doing with four loops. So wrap it around the hook into the ring. You're going to pull up a loop wrap it around into the ring, pull up a loop, and then do that two more times. So four times in total. So three, and the last one, four. And then you go into yarn over and pull through all the loops, all the loops on the hook. And then chain one, and then you're going to be doing a last one, exactly the same with four loops going around the ring like this. I just need a little bit more yarn. Once you have it completed, all the loops, you go into yarn over and pull through all the loops together like this. And now we have the beginning of the strawberry. You're going to then chain one just to secure this in place. And now we can pull nice and tight, closing the ring at the bottom. So now to go up, we are going to be creating some increases on both sides and then following what we have in the middle. So we are going to be starting with a chain of two, turning project, and then into this very first stitch, there is going to be a gap here, we are going to be creating the very first puff stitch following the very first one with three wraparounds. So one, two, 
three because we have the chain at the beginning so that counts as the first one and then yarn over pull through all loops and then you go into chain one now we have the space in between the chain one space in between the previous two puff stitches so we are going to be doing a next one into that with four wrap around so one two three and four yarn over and pull through all loops chain one and then repeat the same into the next space the next chain one space So now chain one and for the last one we are going to be doing into this space right on top of the last puff stitch there is like a stitch here so we are going to be doing the last one into that stitch with four wrap arounds following the same as the previous one all right once you have all the wrap arounds yarn over and pull through all loops and chain one to secure that last puff stitch in place. So chain two, turn project and do the very first puff stitch into this very first space, little stitch here. Chain one into the next chain one space in between the two previous puff stitches, you're going to be doing a puff stitch with four wrap arounds and then chain one and create the next two in between the next two spaces so chain one once you've finished the fourth one in this case so now for the last one just choose any stitch right at the end i'm going to be doing this one and do the last puff stitch into that stitch There we go. So now we have three rows completed. One, two, and three. And now I'm going to be doing the last one because I want my strawberry really, really nice and tiny because we don't have a lot of space here anyways. So it has to be tiny. So now we are going to be following the same steps as the previous one and repeating right on top of this one. And now we can fasten off. So the strawberry is basically now completed. We just have to add the green right at the top. So I've chained one already cut the yarn now we can fasten off so now with the green go ahead and make a slip knot and we can attach here on the right side so the yarn is going to be here on the left so this is the right side of the project of the strawberry and we are going to be just attaching into any stitch right at the beginning it can be any stitch I'm going to be doing this one and I'm going to be attaching with a single crochet so wrap the yarn around the hook you're gonna go into any stitch here on the side we want to start here on the side any that you want and then you're going to pull up a loop wrap it around the hook and then we are gonna go right on top of the next puff stitch and then you're going to pull up a loop so now wrap the yarn around the hook go into the second row we are going to be skipping the next chain one space of this row we are going to go into the second row and then you're going to pull up a loop and then we are going to go right into the top of the next puff stitch so wrap around into the top of the next puff stitch pull up a loop and then wrap it around the hook now we are going to go into the next space of the previous row so we skip the next chain one space, previous row, pull up a loop, wrap the yarn around the hook, on top of the next puff stitch, pull up a loop, wrap it around the hook, the next chain one space of the previous row, skip the next one of this one, into the previous row, pull up a loop. I know it's a little bit confusing, but this is how it looks better at the top of the strawberry. And then wrap it around into the top of the next puff stitch pull up a loop it's gonna be all here on the hook so you have to be patient with this <laughs> so wrap it around into the previous row pull up a loop wrap it around 
on top of the next puff stitch pull up a loop so now here at the end we are going to grab that very last stitch so wrap around the hook go into the previous row into that very last stitch right at the bottom of the last puff stitch and then you're going to pull up a loop here pull up a loop yes <laughs> and then you're going to wrap it around the hook and then you're going to pull up a loop right at the top of that last puff stitch and then pull up a loop now we have to yarn over and pull through all these loops together and make it super tight so yarn over and pull through all loops you can go slowly because it is a lot of loops together so do go slowly all done <laughs> so all loops now we can pull really nice and tight and then you can chain one just to lock everything in place there we go so now you can see that it's all together and our strawberry is now completed look at this it's so worth the stress of this last part because it looks so cute look at this so from here uh, we've chained one already but I just want to kind of slip stitch into the end here again just so it's a little bit more secured in place so just find the stitch right at the end on top of this very last puff stitch and then you're going to pull up a loop and just slip stitch one more time chain one and now we can cut the yarn and we can fasten off so our strawberry is now completed with this yarn i'm going to just put them all together and leave them inside the strawberry we are going to be getting a little bit more of yarn now so we can just feel the inside here of the strawberry so it's a little bit more puffed out so now you can see the strawberry a little bit better it's looking so cute look at this you want to get a little bit more of yarn not a lot just a little bit like this and you want to make a little ball putting them all together i'm going to be cutting this much and we are going to be sewing the strawberry with all this inside here i forgot to leave enough yarn to do the sewing with the red so i'm gonna have to attach a new one in place so just get a little bit of yarn and then thread this yarn into your tapestry needle choose any stitch that you want to start i'm going to be starting right here at the top so i'm going to be inserting my needle right at the top and then at the end i'm going to just make a knot a double knot and then i can leave this yarn here so choose the side where you want to do the sewing i'm going to be doing here and it's going to be kind of sideways like this and then you're going to be doing exactly the same as you did for the flowers but this time i'm going to be using the second round so you're gonna get one stitch of the round and one stitch of the strawberry and then sewing all the way around So once you have half of the strawberry sewn in place, we can then add the extra yarn inside the strawberry and we can continue the sewing around.
just going to be doing the last sewing here is how the back looks it's looking good just gonna do one last sewing here just so it's nice and secured in place there we go so once you've done that take this yarn to the back and we can weave in here at the back So now to attach both of them together, we are going to be doing exactly the same as the first one. So the plain one, in this case for the last one, is going to be on top of the button because that's easier to press. Because we don't have the strawberry, we are not going to be able to press it here. So I'm going to be placing the plain one on top of the button and then the strawberry one right at the back. And then this one we are going to be sewing the other direction, but it's the same thing. I'm going to be doing a little time lapse of me sewing this in place. And then once I have it completed, I will be back and then I'm going to be showing you all of the covers together. the three covers now completed look at them together like this imagine if you have a little bowl with your little measuring tape collection and then all of them are different covers that would look stunning i'm already up for that <laughs> so if you want to see more tutorials on these little covers the super cute covers let me know in the comments i would love to do some more for you guys also maybe i can do some giveaways as well um, in the near future that i have some planned so i can just include some of these on the giveaway too because i think these are amazing and so so ideal when you're doing crochets that it's made to measure and you want them to fit perfectly so i'm always using a measuring tape and these are my go-to now more than ever i love them so so much <laughs> so let me know which one is your favorite in the comments below and if you end up making these don't forget to tag me on instagram at brunaticality so i can see your take on this one and the shades you're going to be using for the flowers and i would love to see how yours turns out as well so thank you so much everyone for watching until the end this is it for today's video i really really hope you guys have enjoyed and if you did don't forget to leave your massive thumbs up and also don't forget to subscribe here to the channel and to turn on the notification bell to receive notifications every time I post super cute crochet videos just like this one. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye bye!